Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Maria Luisa Castanedo. I am a freelance consultant. Hello, my name is Igini Ordonez, and I am also a freelance consultant, and we are so very happy to be here. Today, we are going to talk about a very interesting project that we have been developing for a couple almost uh, for a couple of years. The title of our presentation is Managing Training and the Adoption of Technology. We have been developing this project, as I'm going to be explaining in the first slide, about the context of the uh, and the culture of the school. This is a, a, a public high school that is located in the state of Mexico, very close to the capital city. It's one of the among almost 200 high schools of this specific system around the state of Mexico. As you should know, the state of Mexico is one of the most populated states in the country. Most of the students and teachers come from the surrounding municipalities. The location is called Lerma, a very industrial area. Most of the teachers, uh, in the case of uh, the ones we have been working with, have been teaching between five uh, up to 30 years, specifically in, this, uh, in the, the system of high schools. Uh, a very short number of teachers are considered new teachers every semester due to a process of selection. So that's why there's a mixture of academic background among uh, the, the percentage. So the students, for example, they are uh, about between 15 and 18 years old. So uh, how we consider the culture, very, uh, very different situations, very different backgrounds, but most of them with teaching experience. That was the, one of the common points that we uh, work uh, with the teachers here. The school is divided into shifts, one in the morning, and of course, another in the afternoon. Few teachers repeat. It means that they collaborate in the morning, but also in the afternoon. Uh, what happened with this school is that we started collaborating with them with the specific topics. Uh, but then we realized, and I explained that in the, in the following slide, we found out that those topics were not really have, having a sequence. So the teacher received this training, but it was considered very limited. So uh, they met, they meet every month, but the training that received this month uh, was not connected with the following one. So that's when we decided with the principal and the vice principal uh, to develop, to create a professional development uh, plan. Uh, one of the first things we do, and we are gonna be explaining this during the process, is how we can connect all those topics. So uh, we, we became with a name that is called Teaching Competences. My colleague, Maria Luisa, is gonna explain uh, every one of these competences, but just want to point out that one of the main topics that the school and the teachers were interested in, it was to know more about the flipped classroom because there was an encounter. We started working with them before the pandemic started. So I, I remember uh, very well because the topic was, we were talking about using technology, but they didn't see that close or too close to the reality. So like technology was there, but they were not sure that they could use it. So uh, among other topics, we were with this, with the flip classroom, how to uh, implement a new uh, modality of teaching, trying to give them some other resources. Of course, also we talk about planning, strategies and assessment. But basically, this uh, uh, flipped classroom and, of course, we needed to start with online teaching. There, when we talk about online teaching competencies, we develop this proposal that we are going to be uh, talking about. So 
the first competency is technology. The next one is about interpersonal competence. The next one is interpersonal. And we are going to be explaining one by one. And the last, but not, uh, the last one, but not the least, of course, in importance is about pedagogy. So we, we concentrate every workshop, seminar, talk, that we, think, uh, we did with them in one of these uh, four areas of competencies. So the next part is in charge of Maria Luisa. Go ahead, please. Thank you. So what we noticed, as Maestro Hino was mentioning, is that in spite of the training, there was a certain misalignment between what the objective of the authorities in this school was, uh, which is a full adoption of the flipped classroom methodology and integration of technology, and what was happening, in fact, in the classroom. So uh, we notice this, that the fact that there is training and that there is access to technology does not necessarily mean that technology will be integrated into, into our classroom. And uh, we think that we have the clearest example very close uh, uh, on March the 16th of 2020, of almost two years ago when the pandemic hit. Uh, we had all or most of us have had training in, in using technology in the classroom. Most of us had access to technology, decent uh, connections, etc. And yet we were all caught off guard. We initially, many of us didn't know what to do. I, uh, uh, I included, of course. Uh, so this, this confirms this fact, that the fact that there is training and that there is access to technology does not necessarily mean that it will be integrated. So we decided to shift the focus of the training towards awareness. We have presented these four areas of competency uh, Maestro Hino has, has uh, briefly mentioned and how they relate to, uh, um, to teaching, how they relate to um, the, the, the virtual environment, how the relationship with our students and our peers changes when we are working uh, online, uh, etc. So we decided to focus the training on awareness. So we carried out an, uh, an activity in which uh, all these teachers had to identify their level of, of competency, their current level of competency at that point in three different levels, three, two, one, okay? and consider what they wanted to work on and what were the possible approaches to, to work on that. The main uh, guideline of that workshop was to define, by the end of that workshop, we wanted to define what the competent online teacher looked like. For us to have an ideal, a model that would work with the culture of that particular school, um, uh, and, and what we would aim uh, for. So we mentioned that uh, the fact that they were not at a certain level of competency, at the highest level of competency in any of this, is definitely not a problem. That is why we, are, uh, we decided to take this approach because uh, 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 competencies can be developed through appropriate uh, interventions, which is what we are doing. So Maestro Hino, could you please explain this, the work we did on the descriptors? On the, on the slides we are sharing with you, and uh, th th there are like, we consider three levels. It was a self-assessment, so the teacher decided, rather than telling them, uh, where are you or how much you know, because sometimes those questions are too open. So we decided to divide them according to the descriptors that we mentioned before. So they identify each one of them. We use the abbreviation CASA, K-A-S-A, in order to know each one of them. So the way we did it is uh, we send them the link, so they, they answer online. So we gather the information. We are share with you a sample of their answers. But I would like to know that, for example, we 
put in a, in a, as an indicator the, the word developing. This word was uh, very uh, accepted by the teachers rather than say, no, I don't know anything. Or sometimes it's, the, the opinions were too open, like I know too much, but what, what is too much, right? So these indicators help us to concentrate, to put together the information, but also teachers felt very confident about sharing what, how they feel about every one of the indicators in the four uh, uh, areas of the four competences. The other one was like, uh, it's still inconsistent or superficial. It happens with us as, as well with technology. It's like, I know something, but, but I'm sure that there, that there are more, more to explore. Uh, it's, not in, it's, it's not developing. I know some of the basics, but I still have, it's not, I don't feel sure, I don't feel confident. That has have been happening with most of the teachers. And the, the, the other one was like, it's very consistent. I mean, I know how to do it. So I would like if Maria Lisa help me to, to share with you the working documents. So how we, put this in the, uh, in, in the students. You might not be seen because it's an Excel chart, but it gives you an idea how after every teacher answer according to their own, at their own uh, rhythm, when their own thinking, it was not in a rush. And, and this is very important to, to, to point out. We gave them enough time to think about the answers not like you have only five minutes and and if the, the survey was open uh, uh, an extra time after the presentations we were there solving some questions uh, or doubts that that may have so as you might see just in the in the excel maybe it's not that visible but gives you an idea how technology can be used so you don't have to write down all the answers in a paper questionnaire and then all that job is when technology serves the pedagogy and not the other way around. So what happened at the end, when you see the last column on your right with the green letters that are not too visible, but of course, if you are interested, I am sure that uh, later we are gonna share our email and we, and we can uh, tell you. What happens in those uh, uh, green uh, transcriptions is the summary. So what the teachers are saying about each one, uh, basically the four competences are divided around another four up to six indicators. So uh, it, 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 we got the concentrator and then we share this information with the officials at the school and tell them, well, look what the teachers think or how they feel about the technology competences is like this. So this is a concentration. We discuss with them. We met with the officials, the principal and the vice principals, to discuss if they have the same opinion. And then from there, we can start developing a more long-term professional development courses rather than different sessions that have no connection as I mentioned before. So the official received this, but not only we sent them, we met with them virtually and we explained them and received their feedback. In some cases, they agree completely that, that it was the necessity or the needs that they also see. Uh, I have to be honest, but some of the teachers in their answers were too open. <laughs> like uh, in technology, um, I need more training. And that sentence, <laughs> uh, it, it's like, what exactly, in what area? So that's the advantage of this proposal that we develop along in this school. Exactly. Right? And, and the point is that this uh, document we have just shown you, uh, it has become a working document for us and for the school. And teachers are able to identify there uh, whether uh, their level of competency is developing. Uh, CASA stands for Knowledge, Attitudes, um, uh, Skills and Awareness. 
In some cases, what they have gained is awareness of their level of competency. So we are trying to make this shift. These are some of the highlights of the, the document and how they have defined this spline um, uh, from knowledge uh, of, of a certain a certain program, for example, to the application of technological resources and, and tools. Uh, awareness uh, of, of progress would be the, the lowest level to dedication to learning and knowing about uh, technology and, and using it, okay? Uh, something very important in as for uh, pedagogical uh, competencies, they were initially trying to reproduce what they did face to face, what they did in person, and they are now identifying very clearly how they have new roles and they need to have new approaches to teaching and learning. Um, from uh, many of them, many of these teachers, as Maestro Hino has mentioned, have been teaching for many, many years. So their experience teaching is relevant, definitely. But now what they have to, to accept is a new challenge, including what we call in, in this, what we have called in this uh, 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 areas of competency that we have defined, the four Bs, which one of which is to be an online student ourselves. Uh -huh. be dedicated to, to learning, be uh, willing to accept the challenge. But one of them, the most important, probably, be an online student ourselves for us to be aware of what our students are going through. Uh, something else that was very important was making this distinction uh, between uh, coverage objectives and performance objectives. Uh, from adopting their curriculum, to adapting it for an, uh, an online uh, situation. Because initially they were very worried that they were not going to be able to, uh, to cover uh, everything. So in, in one word, most impor importantly, uh, let's say that the global idea of this document that they themselves uh, defined uh, was from teaching with technology uh, we move all the way to leading uh, in, uh, in a way in which learning is facilitated with, uh, with technology. Uh, so as Maestro Hino has just mentioned, uh, it is, it is, uh, technology becomes uh, a tool, as, as it has always been. Uh, the important thing is pedagogy. Technology serves pedagogy. All right? Okay, and here uh, I, I would like to emphasize in one of the, uh, I think the highlights that lead us as a team, uh, uh, let me tell you that one, uh, I don't know if I have mentioned it, but I don't give the workshops myself or only myself, we share, and that's the other part. It become, uh, since we ask them, what, what do you think? We send them questionnaires to know how they are feeling, they see themselves in, in the workshops like, oh, I say that, I gave them my opinion about it. They are considering me as a teacher, not you have to do this and here this, the, uh, you have this app, et cetera, et cetera. So they are aware that they need it, but also they, they, they are becoming more part of the project itself. They are not just receiving information that we never know. Sometimes we don't know if they use it. We took into consideration their answers, so they, uh, the next process, the next training workshop or seminar is related to those highlights that we get from their answers. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. So when we, are, we talk about integration of technology, we're talking about change. And uh, change is something that needs to be carefully managed in organizations for it to eventually be adopted. Uh, so we have uh, first order change in which um, uh, the, the, it might only imply a certain adjustment, adjustment for um, our, our methods to be more effective and more efficient. So, for example, in a school setting, this first order change would be um, 
instead of using uh, a paper to uh, to take attendance and to register whether everyone has attended and, and uh, handed in their work, we use an Excel uh, uh, sheet. So we are just making that a small shift, that little adjustment, and we're making it actually more effective and more efficient. We also have second order change in which our beliefs and the processes that we are used to, to carrying out uh, uh, have to change. Our objectives and the roles we play in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, change many times are also challenged. And then the application of uh, what we plan can also be very different. So as you can imagine, uh, it is, it is uh, very clear. There are first order and second order change. There is a first order and second order change, but change can find barriers. It can find different obstacles that are not necessarily conscious right uh, we can we can uh, 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 we find the most evident uh, which uh, is which are first order barriers first order barriers are for example access to equipment and, and software which is what happened in many schools uh, a couple of years ago uh, technical and administrative support, having sufficient technical and administrative support, that could be another first order barrier. Uh, uh, training as well. And uh, for example, stable connections, having enough bandwidth to be able to, to work and, and do what we, what we want to do. So as you can see, first order barriers, uh, the, the first... Um, literally the first order of barrier that we find when we want to to um, adopt a, a, a change is something uh, superficial for lack of a better term but actually it can be solved with uh, decisions and with budget okay having access to equipment and software uh, or or having uh, technical administrative support counting on training or uh, having stable connections, et cetera, they are extrinsic uh, uh, barriers that can be solved uh, uh, by uh, the decision makers in an institution or an organization. And in general, it can be solved with uh, uh, budget allocation. However, we might also find second order barriers. That's, that is uh, an issue, right? Because well, these are... Uh, of, of uh, more intangible uh, nature. They can be methodological and emotional uh, barriers. Maestro Hino? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, and this is the point, basically, when we were uh, called to help, uh, to share with them the, the experience. Um, I was an in-service teacher for almost... 34 years, and I never stopped learning. Uh, there was always something out there. I like attending different seminars and so on. So when I was called to be part of this project, and when I talk to teachers, I re it, it reminds myself what happened when I was a young teacher. I'm still young, but uh, with more experience, of course. <laughs> but they, they were, I, 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 I was asking the teachers in the first seminars, in the first workshops that we did with them, what is your main problem? And they say, I, I don't know how to plan, or plan is difficult for me, and uh, uh, I don't understand uh, how I have to center the attention in the students. The, the program is expecting me to do a lot of things, and the students have a lot of uh, uh, lack of contents because they didn't work. So with all this in mind, anyway, they were teaching. Now imagine what happened when they enter into the world of online teaching without preparation. Not because they did not want to, but uh, because that, that was not there in, in, in the process. So one of the methodological barriers is to understand how to do this, what we are doing here on online presentation, how I have to to bring all these 
a teaching styles that I do in the classroom. Like uh, I love moving myself and uh, uh, doing a lot of things. And now just sitting in a chair, that it, which is my routine. Most of us as teachers have routines in the classroom. We go to the uh, uh, board, write or, or do slides or bring music, etc. There are so many things. So the first one is how to uh, try to break out those barriers that they were saying, I don't know. I, I don't know how to do this. I have those other barriers like connection or having a computer that works, etc. Uh, those were the main uh, methodological barriers that they mentioned. The use of time is exactly the same, either an online class and in a face-to-face. -face. So we have to adapt and it become another issue that was how to assess in an online course. Is the same? Because in, an, in a phase on in-person class, I do have the control. I know I have a, a feeling, but in an online environment it's, it's difficult. So we are still in, in the process, but what we did is regarding each one of these methodological barriers, we develop a specific workshop. So if you consider this, the teaching style, the assessment, okay, let's go and work specifically on that. So this is a very important area so the teacher feel confident about how he was doing. No, uh, because sometimes they have received one seminar here, another seminar there with a lot of applications, like happened to us, like we were taking every single seminar to, to know how to do it. But I, I have received hundreds of ideas, but now how I use them? What can I do with all this? And then become the other part that is not just the methodological, but the other that is the emotional barriers. So what happened in my mind, because, I need to understand myself, my position as a teacher. Uh, I have been spoke, speaking to teachers in different, not only for this project, but for, uh, for more other projects I work uh, with, is that they feel like they, they, have, uh, they, they, they don't have the same presence with the students because even they don't know some of them or most of them because they have been working online. And it has to be with my way of thinking as a teacher. Myself, I was trained as an in-person teacher, as a face-to-face -face teacher. So I need to change my mind. I need to take care of even my, my appearance because I don't know how the others see me. I think they see me in a, in a, in a certain way, but also this part of how I... I feel myself about as a teacher and how the teachers feel about the, the students see us. Oh, look, the house is very nice <laughs> or the house is uh, <laughs> small or green or uh, et cetera. So uh, some, some teachers did not like when, uh, when we give workshops, they don't like to open the camera because they feel like kind of invasion. So this is an emotional barrier, the use of the voice. I have listened to myself a couple of times, but I remember the very, very first time I laugh at myself and say, it, I sound so funny when I listen to myself. So it's, it, it's, it, it's part of the change, but no, I, I, I feel more confident, but not every single teacher happened that. So we ask them, we encourage them, we ask them to share experiences, and they start integrating this in order to pass or surpass or start surpassing these emotional barriers. Maria Luisa, go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. So what we did in order to find, uh, to pinpoint the, the barriers, what we were uh, facing in to help them face change, we carried out a survey to identify them. Uh, again, we use technology. Let me show you. We have a link here. Um, it is in Spanish because, as we mentioned, uh, it was carried, carried out uh, across the board. It's being carried out across the board. So we have not only English teachers, but also uh, math and science and uh, everything, and even uh, people who are administrative um, 
staff. Um, so here, here we have uh, this, and it is still open. The, the survey is still open in case they want to change answers. Nobody um, uh, has changed their answers so far. Uh, but, I mean, we keep in touch with them and we continuously mention uh, this in case they want to, to mention uh, something. For example, one of the questions in, in our survey is, what is a course that integrates technology like? And we got from the very uh, vague answer of dynamic, right, without any further uh, explanation or elaboration, to somebody who, and, and we can see the level of competency that they have uh, developed so far um, uh, with, for example, technological uh, competencies. So we go from the very vague dynamic to uh, a, a course that uses apps and videos to somebody who is already thinking about facilitating learning through technology. The thing is that with the survey, we can identify who is answering what. They know that uh, uh, we know who answered what, and there is no judgment. It is it is just information. The idea of the survey is, is uh, for it not to be judgmental, but for us to have sufficient information to help them, okay? So we can see very clearly the different levels of competency of, of our uh, teachers, of our participants. And therefore, we can aim at more uh, uh, focused training, more focused interventions in, in the near future. Uh, some of the uh, responses are all giving, already giving us uh, interesting information to work with. Uh -huh. For example, uh, problems to integrate technology. Here, the idea of this question is for them to tell us what are the first order barriers that they have uh, come across. And look at, at, the, at the percentages, okay? We have four um, issues that constitute 90%, these four constitute 90% of the problems that they have had to integrate uh, technology into, into their, their classrooms. Interestingly enough, this, uh, these are the, the numbers, these are the, the uh, hard data, okay? But once we ask them to elaborate on their, on their answer, to explain why they chose that, the, thing, the things that they, they talk about are, are, are more interesting and begin to give us light on uh, uh, how to how to proceed pr proceed where are things probably uh, going so the next uh, the question that goes with uh, with this is which one has had most impact on on your teaching and they talk about connectivity of course they talk about knowledge of the software or use of of the software but they immediately go to Problems uh, with uh, with their students' attendance, for example, uh, participation and uh, attention. How to catch their students' attention? So this is, in a way, a first order barrier because it is external. But this is not something that we can solve with budget. Uh, they also talk about pedagogical design. So the the third and the fourth um, uh, and the fourth. Uh, impactful uh, issues have already uh, something to do with second order, order uh, barriers, with methodological barriers. I think that we have all faced, or most of us have, have faced, this issue of uh, attendance or of students' participation from not wanting to turn on the camera to not handing, uh, uh, well, or sending work uh, on time, uh, uh, etc. Okay, and we think that it has to do with with uh, the design of of our activities. So this might be a gray area. Let's say, let's call it that way, between first and second order barriers, because they are going already into methodological and emotional uh, uh, issues. So connectivity and, and knowledge and use of software can be solved. They, these are problems that can be solved with budget, 
creativity and dedication, okay? So then the next question was, what, which solutions have you implemented? There are people who are determined to make things work and, and they are the ones who, who give us hope in, in, in this particular context, okay? That say, I have used my own connection. I have bought a new equipment. Um, uh, somebody actually uh, talked about how the, the credit that, that they have got for to buy new equipment was working, or they go somewhere else to record and upload their lessons on, on a platform. People that have found and shared tutorials and, and training. Uh -huh. And we have, of course, this group uh, uh, that we want to say, we want to think that uh, whose competencies are still developing, who say it hasn't been solved yet. All right. It hasn't been solved, probably waiting for decision makers to do something about, about it, but probably also needing some sort of motivation for them to begin to, to solve. As for uh, barriers that, that, are, that have more to do with uh, methodology or, or our own emotions, it is also very uh, noticeable that there are four issues that constitute, uh, these four issues constitute 86.7%, only four issues, 86.7% of the barriers. Again, we have uh, um, this, uh, these issues, the, the almost 90% of the barriers, very clearly concentrate on, on this. Uh-huh. Uh, not being having to change their style or their teaching um, uh, methodology, not being able to lead the lesson and define the rhythm of the lesson, uh, the way in which I have to limit explanations, uh, the fact that I cannot lecture uh, um, uh, anymore. Science teachers, for example, are having a, a hard time with, with this. Uh, another big concern of theirs is not being able to identify students' needs, uh, both learning needs and emotional uh, needs. Also, the time that they have to invest on, on, les on lesson uh, preparation, recording videos and audios, or somebody said it takes forever to find and select resources for the classroom planning synchronous and asynchronous activities for the flipped classroom. So as you can see, this is the first uh, uh, training they received, uh, the flipped, uh, uh, working with, a flip in, in, with flipped classroom methodology. And yet it continues to be one of the first of the most important methodological barriers they have. Um, these are what they have mentioned that are the, the most impactful uh, issues, very much in line with what, they, with what they say, okay? They are still worried about the credibility of their academic tasks. And we insist that if a question can be answered by Google, uh, maybe we should change the, the question, okay? For it to be answered by the student. Again, we have the same uh, groups those that are finding different ways to contact students, those that have adapted their, their schedules and are indeed still working longer hours. Uh, wonderful examples of how teachers are beginning to work together. And they mention communication and sharing and asking for help as a solution to the methodological and emotional barriers. Looking for online tutorials um, uh, as well. So this helps us, this gives us this, this hope, this uh, almost certainty that the work we are, are doing with them is having an impact because they are becoming increasingly uh, independent to solve this. And eventually they will be able to, uh, to, to work on this professional development on their own. We definitely still have the group that say, well, no, it, it hasn't been solved yet. And all these impactful issues are not in my hands. And, and, and this, uh, we are quoting the, the answer. So we will always have um, a, a part of, of um, the people we, are, we work with in this type of interventions 
that sort of oppose the, the change, oppose the innovation. And uh, they help us to adjust what we are doing. So in the future, Maestro Eugenio, you, you have a much clearer uh, guideline for what we plan to do. Sure. Uh, and uh, what we have got is a wonderful experience because they like open their hearts to us. When a teacher is aware of their needs and when realize that he needs to change, despite all the barriers that exist, technological, emotional, or methodological, it's, it's very easy. What we have done is to design um, uh, specific workshops. And a group of teachers, for example, was taking a planning course about a specific how to plan. And we said, how? Yes, some teachers need because they are very young, because need, they need to fresh up. Some others were taking online assessment because for them, they were, the technological barriers are not there. So we, instead of giving to all the teachers the same, the same workshop without sense, it can be very interesting. We can be a wonderful presenter and we can motivate them. But no, they don't need it because it, you know, again, so they have options. So the next step is to solve the access situation that depends on the officials. But basically, we are concentrating in the training. But the training they need and they use. So since we meet with them every month, we ask them, what is next? What do you would you like to talk about next? But first, you need to use what you see in this session. And at the end of the, the semester, that is just starting. We are just in the middle of the school year. So we expect to finish before the summer comes. So the final step is now we are going to see you if you agree to do with that. That's a community practice. Not as a supervisor, uh, we want to see how you are applying all this training process. Are you surpassing the barriers? Or wh what is the problem? And at some point, if the circumstances allow us, even work one to one person. That's that's important because at some point you have to lead them. We, now we are leading them, but not alone with my all expertise. I have some experience, but in a, in a classroom, there is a lot of expertise. There are many steps. They are processing the information. And the next semester is, okay, we have worked with you all these topics. So now go and use them. Tell us what, and we are going to, if you agree, if you accept, it's a volunteer job, we are going to be observing you. This is the next step of this project, and I'm sure if we have the opportunity, we are going to share with you. This is my final words. Thank you very much. Maria Lisa, please close. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro Eugenio, and thank, all, thank you all for being here. So this, the story of this project is to be continued. We hopefully will let you know uh, how it's uh, how it came to 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 be to an end, but definitely one of uh, our objectives is to develop a group of trainers uh, within the staff uh, of uh, of the school and make this observation of classroom practice something regular in in this uh, particular institution. And uh, for, the, uh, for observation of classroom practice to be a developmental uh, experience and uh, not something that, that they all, they all uh, dread. They, uh, the idea is that they work in, in uh, different academias, what they call academia. So this is all the language teachers, all the, the math teachers, all the science teachers together. And uh, it has been really a very rewarding um, experience. So uh, here are some references uh, and in which we, with which we have been working along this, this uh, project. And uh, well, without uh, uh, not much more to, to let you know about our project, we thank you very much for your presence in this talk. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro Hino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. And we will be open to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you.